Hello and welcome to the second part of the Torch System tutorial. In the previous episode we have implemented the pickup part and now we can pick up our torch but we cannot place it anywhere, we cannot drop it and the torch is nothing more than a simple 3D model right now. In today's episode we will implement the torch placement functionality. Let's start. After we have picked up our torch, if the pickup key is pressed again and we are holding an item or torch in our case, we want to cast a ray in front of our player's camera and find a valid spot to place our torch. We will start by adding a lane trace by channel node, which will cast the ray for us. The start point will be our camera world location and for the end point we will get our camera forward vector, multiply it by the detection distance in front of our character. For example, if you want to drop the item further, you have to increase the float variable. Adjust this number to fit your needs and finally add the world location to the result because remember that will be our end point of the raycast. After that we need to check if our lane trace hit something. If that is true, that means we will have a basically valid spot to place our torch. So we need to detach our torch from the player's hand, get the health item variable we've created and connect it into the targets of the node. After that we need the set actor transform node which will allow us to place the torch. Set the rules of the detach actor from node to keep world. And now we will have to determine the location, rotation and the scale when we place our item. And to obtain this information we have to break the hit results from our line trace. That way we are breaking the information into smaller chunks that we will use. Get the location of the hit result and plug it into the location of the set actor transform node. Select split struct pin since we will need to work with the location, rotation and scale of the object independently. We want to get the location of the hit vector and connect it to the transform location. For the rotation part we will get the normal of the hit vector and plug it into the tra transform rotation. Unreal will auto convert the vector to rotator and as a result we will get rotation from X vector. This will basically return the new type of structure F rotator which orientation corresponds to the direction in which the vector points. And the final thing here after we do that is to set is holding to false since when we place the item we don't want the game to think that our character is still holding a torch. Let's try this out. We press E and we get the torch in our hand and now if we press E again it will drop the torch on the ground. Ok, let's fix that. Oh yeah, so we've missed to plug the health item variable to the target of the set actor transform and now it, it refers to the whole player. That's why it will rotate and set change to player location 2. Let's fix this and try again. Now we have some progress. We can freely pick up and place the torch. Ok, but here you will see two main problems that we will fix in this episode. The first problem is that the torch will always have the wrong rotation when it's placed. On the ground or on a wall for example. It will always stay horizontally if it's placed on the ground and vertically if it's placed on a wall. And uh, the second problem is that even if we turn the camera to point behind our player's back, we are still able to drop the torch. And this is not very realistic also. It's not something crucial, but I don't like it. If this works for you, you can leave it like this. I'll show you how to fix this. If you know a better way, please send me a comment. Ok, so let's create a new function and name it is looking forward. You can reuse this function in many different scenarios. We will need to check something here, so we will need a boolean as an output result that will determine if we are looking forward or no. I will name it return value, you can name it however you wanna. And now we will need to get the player camera manager which will return the player's camera for the specific player index for the particular player in our case. Get the camera current rotation too and then get the x direction vector. We will need the actor forwards vector too. 
and now we will use something called dot product which basically returns the dot product between two vectors I will explain you how this works in a minute let's take the two vectors and if the dot product of them is greater than zero that means we are looking forward make the function pure and save and compile going back into the third person bp we have to add one more if condition after the moment we are checking if we are holding a torch already so if we are looking forward then we can place the torch if not do nothing and let's test this out now if we press E we can drop the torch but if our camera is looking backwards we won't be able to drop it. We can drop it only if we are looking forward or 90 degrees in left or right direction. Let me explain to you how this works now. We are getting the actor forward vector and the camera x rotation vector and we want to get the dot product of both of them right. So in this case we will get a number between 1 and minus 1. If we are looking straight forward the number will be 1. By gradually rotating the camera to left or right we will reduce the number until it reaches minus 1 and the camera looks behind the player. And when we reach 90 degrees in the left or right direction the number of the product will become 0. And if you remember we've checked if the dot product is greater than zero which means if we turn our camera more than 90 degrees we won't be able to drop the torch that guarantees us the torch will be dropped in front of our player on or 90 degrees left or right diagonally i drew it only for the right part but this is exactly the same for the left part you can narrow down the angle by playing with the variable in the function I hope that makes sense for you and now knowing this we are going to fix the torch rotation also. The whole idea behind the next logic we will create is that we will get the dot product of the up vector of our character and the hit normal of the ray cast and based on the result we will know if the torch is going to be placed on the ground or on another wall object in front of us. So we will determine the rotation of the torch based on that information. Let's create a new macro, I will name it select rotator. To determine this we will work with three vectors, go and declare them into the input section. Now we are going to take the first vector and make rotator from x, which we will build a vector only using the x axis. Split it and combine the vector again and now we are going to work only with the y value. Add to the y value minus 45, if we need we can tweak this number later. This will be the case when we want to place the torch on a surface in front of our player. Let's take the same logic and apply it when we want to place the torch on the ground. I'll change only the values on the y vector and the last thing is to get the player's up vector and get the dot product between the player's up vector and the normal hit from the ray cast. That way we will determine if we are placing the torch on the ground or not. And if this value is more than 0.8 for example, then we are going to select the A option. If not, then we are selecting the other rotator value marked as B. Let's connect that with the output node. I've made a little mistake, we will need make rotator not make vector node. We are working with rotation. Just replace both nodes, connect them to the slots and let's try this out. But before that we need to call our macro and link it with the transform rotation. And now we can place the torch on different objects and it will always face, face the right direction no matter which side we choose. The final thing for this episode will be to add some randomness on the rotation. You can skip this if you don't need it. I think it's a nice addition to our little mechanic. Go back to the select rotator macro and add random float in range node instead of using a predefined number. You can test different values that will fit your gameplay. And now every time we place the torch we will have a slightly random rotation.
And yeah, this was everything for the today's episode. In the next episode, we will create the Torch BP, making it interactable with the other objects. If you like this video, consider subscribing on my channel. It helps me a lot. Thank you for watching and see you in the next episode. Bye.